All right, uh, let's begin our session. Am I visible to you? <clears throat> so uh, this is basically an orientation session where I you know, give you an idea as to what the entire course will be and Okay, so there's a network issue. Okay, no, so never mind. Uh, it's okay, I wish uh, as long as you can hear me, then that's fine. Now, uh, so this is basic, in this particular session, we just basically give you an idea as to what exactly the course is all about and what are all the things that you have to do. And of course, it'll also help you, you know, uh, you know plan the uh, journey as well or plan your preparation as well. So when it comes to the AAA paper or when it comes to any uh, professional paper, I would say there is a, uh, a great deal of time that you will have to devote in order to prepare for this particular exam. So what all things should you do during this time or uh, how much time you can allow? Well, that's something that, you know, you yourself will have to decide for yourself. But uh, how exactly can you utilize it? What all things should you do before attending the exam? This is what we will be covering in this particular session. Now, I'll just uh, share my screen. Hold on a second. Oh, yeah. Before that, uh, can you guys tell me that, uh, yeah, uh, Ayush, you can type this in as well. Just give me an update on the status as to where are you now? Have you uh, started watching the video lectures or uh, have you started practicing questions, etc.? Can you just give me an update on that? I just enrolled this morning. So <laughs> okay. I'm okay. Not started with everything yet, yeah. Okay, no problem, no problem. Uh, uh, okay, that's totally fine because yeah, we still have like two months ahead of us, so definitely we can you know make time to prepare ourselves for the June session definitely. And you guys are attending for the June session, yes? Right. Uh, Ayush as well. Yeah, I have watched 12 lectures. Great. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's good to know. So uh, that's basically you're like taking the first step. The first step is definitely to learn the entire syllabus itself and watch the video lectures throughout the process. Now, uh, hold on a second. I'll share my screen. So when we talk about the uh, syllabus of AAA, and uh, I would really appreciate it if you can keep your videos on because uh, you know, kind of feels weird if you you know talk just talk you know, with my video on alone. So yeah, any which ways. Uh, so let's just uh, take a look at the syllabus first of all. When it comes to the syllabus of AAA, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven syllabus areas. Well, there's also a uh, another eighth one as well. We will get into that. Now, the first syllabus area is where you revise through the basics, which you may have learned from your uh, audit and assurance paper. But, and I believe that you may have received an exemption for that, right, uh, Isha? Okay, no worries. We will still be you know, covering a, a great deal of as what we've learned within the audit and assurance uh, as well when it comes to the first few video lectures. Well, the reason behind this is that I know that you know some of these topics is something that you're familiar with from your chartered accountancy course, definitely. But uh, you know, you need to understand how ACCA has you know taught their students uh, or what the knowledge is, so that you can get a better understanding as to how to tackle the questions that ACCA has uh, you know uh, put forward uh, in your exam. So uh, we'll cover the basics as well as the regulatory aspects of audit when it comes to part A, and uh, when it comes to part B, we learn about the ethics and uh, various other uh, like professional considerations that we provide in order to uh, deal with certain ethical dilemmas and situations like that. And after that, we take a look at quality control and practice management. Now, quality control and practice management is like the smallest syllabus area out of the entire syllabus, and it's kind of really easy to learn as well. But uh, the more uh, the importance of this particular syllabus area is more on the side of questions, because when it comes to questions, you can be tested of questions where uh, you will have to point out as to what are the quality control issues or uh, what are the practice management issues? Practice management issues are basically the uh, issues that an audit firm has within themselves. That's basically the idea. For example, you may have a poorly trained manager or uh, employees who may lack the skills or lack the qualifications, et cetera. So these kinds of issues that you will have to point out from the scenario. And we have, of course, definitely practiced a lot of questions in relation to that, so don't worry about that. And then we have part D, where we look at planning and conducting an audit of historical financial 
information, which is basically a brief, uh, I would say, uh, there are a lot of topics which has been carried forward from the audit and assurance syllabus. And uh, this is basically the primary, I would say, the audit process. That's basically it. That's basically as to what the syllabus uh, covers, the uh, audit planning, as well as the uh, risk assessment process, as well as the, uh, you know, uh, the internal control reviews, etc., things like that. But uh, we don't necessarily have much about internal control when it comes to the advanced audit and assurance paper. So don't worry about that much. Now, uh, because when it comes to you know the uh, you know the UK kind of uh, UK audit, we don't mandatorily look at the uh, internal control procedures. We just you know review it. That's basically review it if it is deemed necessary. If there are like uh, you know a high it is a high high risk client or so. So that's basically the uh, idea here. And then we move on to part E, which is completion review and reporting, where we look at all the reporting related aspects as well as the uh, I would say. See, the idea behind part is that you will have to look at as to what the, uh, you know, audit report will be structured as, and uh, you would be required to point out mistakes that you may have identified from the audit report as well. So that's basically some questions that you can expect from this particular syllabus area. And then we move on to part F, other assignments. So part D focuses, or not just part D, all the other, uh, you know, parts that we've discussed up until now focuses on the main audit process. Uh, but when it comes to part F, we will focus on things like, uh, you know, uh, the PFI or pro, uh, PFI is basically prospective financial statements review. It's all about review engagements rather than a statutory audit. That's basically the idea here. We look at uh, prospective financial information review, as well as uh, we look at the uh, due diligence reviews as well. We look at forensic audit and things like that. So, uh, and when it comes to part G, there are current issues and developments, which is something that we should always keep an eye out for, because we have included some of the current issues within our lectures itself. But, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to this particular syllabus area, one key advice that I'd like to point out is that you should always keep an eye out for the technical articles that can come up within the ECC's website, because there is always, uh, you know, some uh, new technical article coming up, uh, you know, uh, after months go pass by. So just keep an eye out for that and read through the latest technical articles. That's something that I would advise as well. We have, uh, I believe I myself have provided some debrief versions of some of those te technical articles on uh, YouTube as well. You can check that out if you want as well. And we have provided those uh, an in detailed discussion of these within our sessions as well. And now for the next part of it, I have shared my screen, I believe. Yes, once again. <clears throat> uh, can you see the syllabus PDF? It's visible, right? Okay. We have a new journey as well. Okay. Uh, so when it comes to the uh, new syllabus, uh, I would say we have they have added something new to the syllabus called the syllabus part H, which is employability and technology skills. Now, this is not a technical area. It's just a skill that you need to have for the exam. And what is it all about? If you read through it, it's kind of silly if you, if you honestly you know, read through this because it says that uh, use computer technology to efficiently access and manipulate relevant information. Well, all that is all that you require here is basically the basic Excel skill. That's basically it. So uh, what they are expecting you to do is you should have that basic, you know, uh, Excel knowledge as well as, uh, you know, word processor knowledge so that you can write your or provide your answer within the uh, CBE practice platform. That's basically the idea here. Because ultimately, we will be writing our exam within the CBE environment itself. Since you're doing that, you need to have the proficiency uh, for writing the exam within the, with that particular environment. So that's basically the uh, idea provided here. So that is basically as to what part H is all about. Now, moving on <clears throat> to the more important areas as well. So that's all about the syllabus of AAA. And I hope that you find it really interesting as well. It's, it is pretty interesting if you ask me because there are a lot of you know, advanced knowledge that you learn throughout this particular course as well. And uh, when it comes to the exam, there are a few things that you have to keep in mind here. One is the time related aspects, which is uh, you know, really something that uh, most students face difficulty and we will discuss about that. But before that, let's discuss the exam structure once more. Uh, so we have the AAA exam, which is uh, a three hour and 15 minutes exam. And we have two sections here, section A and section B. Uh, 
In section A, we have one 50 mark case study question. And out of this 50 marks, 46 marks are the technical marks, which you earn by writing the answer, as simple as that. And four marks here are professional marks. Now, during the uh, you know question practice that we have, throughout our video lectures, as well as uh, while practicing questions within the revision bootcamp itself. I have you know, told you as to how exactly can you score these professional marks, as well as uh, how exactly can you easily uh, structure your answer in such a way that you can impress the examiner as well. So follow those instructions while practicing the questions as well. Now, that's basically all about section A. And another really important thing about section A, not just section A, but the overall exam is that there are questions that you can expect in the exam. For example, you can expect that there would be an audit risk question. And uh, I believe that uh, those who have already attended the exam once will agree with me. You can definitely expect an audit risk question or a substantive procedure question. But the uh, you know the catch to that is that that's not the only thing that's there. We also have some uh, areas where they will uh, test the uh, other related concepts as well, such as uh, they might uh, you know uh, ask for the preconditions of an audit, uh, basically in relation to IAC 210, or uh, they can uh, you know test various other uh, principles or from various other standards as well. So in order to understand all of these uh, aspects, or in order to tackle all of these questions as well you need to have a full coverage of the entire syllabus. We can't just, you know, question sport with just the audit risk questions, or we can't just, just practice the audit risk or substantive procedures or uh, various other questions to score the maximum marks available. You need to have full syllabus coverage, or you need to have a good grasp of the entire syllabus so that you can, uh, you know, efficiently and effectively tackle the, the any questions that the examiner can uh, put forth in the exam. Now, when it comes to section B, we have two 25 mark questions. And uh, well, when it comes to the 50 mark questions, one thing that we can we do surely know is that this particular question would be within the planning stage of the audit. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind, it's in the planning stage of the audit. Whereas when it comes to section B, one question, we have two 25 mark questions. Out of that, one 25 mark question will be in relation to the review stage of the audit. So they will, you know, ask things like what exactly would the impact on the audit opinion be if a particular issue exists or what exactly we, they will provide you with an extract of the audit report and you will have to point out what are the mistakes here. So uh, those are like really interesting questions as well. So uh, these are this is one of the questions that you can expect in the exam. And then there is this third question, which could be anything. And by anything, what I mean is that it can either be a. Uh, uh, I would say an ethical question, or you would be required to identify ethical issues or professional issues from a scenario, and you will have to, you know, uh, explain it, identify it, explain it, and then you will have to, uh, you know, provide a safeguard if there is any. And then, uh, or it could be another, you know, uh, question in relation to other assignments as well. It could be something in relation to due diligence review or prospective financial information review, or it could be something in relation to uh, forensic audit as well. So that's basically the kind of questions that you can expect within the exam and what the overall exam structure is all about. I know that I'm uh, boring some of you since you already know this, but I hope some, uh, you know, new insights have come to your attention as well. Now, uh, Moving on to the uh, next aspect, that is time and location. And I believe that Isha has been really curiously waiting for this as well. So uh, let me just quickly explain as to how the time uh, you know, strategy should be. So when it comes to the ACC recommendation, they say that you should take, uh, you should take a minimum of 1.8 minutes per mark. That's basically the strategy that you have to follow here. So whenever you're tackling a question, just multiply the marks available uh, to that question with 1.8. That's basically the approach. Now, uh, so based on this approach, I've uh, you know uh, divided the time that you take for each question to two phases here. We have the reading and planning phase and then the writing phase. Now, I could just simply tell you the strategy just, to, just a few days before the exam, but, uh, but the key reason that I've explained it at, uh, I've explained this particular strategy at this point of time is basically because you need to adopt this particular strategy while practicing questions itself. That is how you can you know, become a bit more quicker when uh, in the exam. So try to adopt the strategy while practicing question itself so that you can tackle the questions a bit more quicker within the exam. That's a really key important point that you have to keep in mind. Now, 
Moving on to the next aspect. Uh, yeah, section A. So when it comes to section A, the 50 mark question, 20 minutes are allocated to reading and planning. Now that might give rise to another question. What exactly do I mean by reading and planning? What exactly is this? Let's talk about that. So when it comes to reading and planning, it's kind of a pretty uh, straightforward process. All you have to do is you have to, first of all, uh, read through the requirement, first of all, that's kind of obvious, isn't it? And then go through the scenario, highlight the important points within the scenario, and then plan your answer. By plan your answer, what I mean is just, you know, uh, create a structure in your head and then, you know, start writing the answer. That's basically something that I would do. For example, let's say that you've pointed out a lot of audit risk in the exam. So what exactly should the structure or, or, or the, what exactly should the order, uh, what exactly should the order be to present your answer? That's something that you can, you know, think out in a few seconds, right? So this is basically what I mean by uh, planning here. So just plan the structure of your answer. And that structure is really important because, you know, it, that it can, you know, help you get the professional marks over here, over there as well. Because whenever you, you know, tackle an audit risk question, there could be some, uh, you know, audit risk which are which has been really, uh, I would say, uh, pointed out by the examiner within the scenario, and there can also be a speculative audit risk as well which is basically a hypothetical risk that we think ourselves. Okay, if this this particular figure has increased, then it could be due to a particular reason. So this is basically as to what a, a speculative risk is. So what some students do is uh, they just, you know, write, uh, write down all these speculative risks rather than the uh, risk that the uh, examiner has provided a lot of information about. So uh, don't make this particular mistake. Uh, while reading through the scenario, you will be able to easily understand as to what exactly are the issues that the examiner wants us to write. So if we were if we are able to identify that, then we should definitely go for that first, right? So uh, that is basically how you structure, uh, how you should structure your answer when it comes to these kinds of questions. I hope uh, I hope that you guys have understood that. If do you have any questions regarding that as of now? All right, uh, Ayush, you're fine as well. Shoot it in the chat box and I can see. <clears throat> and SN, okay, I'm not sure who that is, but yeah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> moving on. So 20 minutes for reading and planning and the rest of the one hour and 10 minutes should be taken for writing your answer. Now, uh, some students, I would say, not just some students, I've heard this from a lot of uh, students who, you know, had a difficult time in the AAA exam as well, especially, you know, my friends while I was writing uh, the AAA exam at the time as well. So what they said was, uh, they took like one and a half hours, they planned for one and a half hours for the first question. However, it took them like two hours or two and a half hours to write the first question itself. Well, that's basically due to a lack of practice. That's one and a lack of strategy as well. So I would say just, you know, this is the one of the most important reasons why I specifically stated that you will have to adopt the same strategy while practicing the questions itself, because uh, and uh, this is also due to another reason, because it, it, what they do is they tend to, you know, there is the exam pressure, that's one. And more and about that, you get tend to think more as well. Okay, is this answer right? Or is, is there a better answer? So don't overthink stuff during the exam. That's something that I would highly recommend as well. And uh, even before that, uh, just, you know, start practicing questions you think, using this particular time strategy so that you can be a bit more quicker. And uh, when it comes to the exam, you will strictly have to follow this time strategy so that you don't, you know, waste time uh, or you don't, you know, finish, you don't, uh, you know, uh, you know, leave out any questions. So keep that in mind. <coughs> Sorry about that. Now, when it comes to section B, we have seven minutes since it's only 25 marks. We have seven minutes for reading and planning and 38 minutes to write our answer. So that's basically it. This is basically the, uh, I would say, the time strategy that we have to keep in mind while practicing question, while doing the past papers, while attending mock exams, as well as while attending the main exam as well. So keep this in mind. Now, moving on to the next aspect, that is our plan of attack. So what should the plan of attack be? That's something that you will have to plan it out for yourselves. But let me give you a basic idea as to what all things should be included here. 
the step one is kind of obvious and so is step two as well so step one is basically learning the entire syllabus and by the entire syllabus i mean 100 percent of all the topics and all the concepts within the syllabus as i stated before question sporting is uh, you know, quite useless, to be honest. And, uh, you know, it, this particular aspect has been pointed out by the examiners themselves within the examiner's report as well. So they specifically mentioned that students even now tend to, you know, even after, you know, publishing that particular report, which says no questions sporting, uh, the students have started, you know, to support the questions because they do expect some substantive procedures to show up, some audit risk questions to show up. So they expect these questions and they only practice these particular questions to attend the exam but that's not necessarily enough isn't it because the uh question scenario so the requirements will also require to test some uh, additional uh accounting sorry not accounting auditing principles as well so keep that in mind and learn each and everything secondly we have of course practice questions well, once you've learned the knowledge, you learn how to apply that knowledge to practical scenario. So practice as much questions as you can, not just the don't just stick with the, uh, you know, the revision boot camp. You can, you know, find a lot of other resources as well, such as the uh, Kaplan or BPP revision kit. So keep on practicing questions from these areas. And, uh, you know, when it comes to the revision kits, what I would say is you only need to practice one of them because when it comes to these kind of revision kits, there are some common questions. A majority of questions are like common in both these revision kits. So you don't necessarily have to, you know, waste your money buying two of these. Just, you know, buy one of them and then, you know, practice questions uh, in relation to that. Uh, I believe that Kaplan is, uh, especially when if you're working professional, Kaplan uh, books are kind of, you know, uh, they have like a small number of questions, but they do have a, a great variety as well. Now, <clears throat> moving on to step three. Step three is if you are done doing the questions, then, you know, do it again because, you know, there is practice is never enough, to be honest, because if you you should utilize as much time as you can, because I know that some of you might be, you know, working professionals, some of you might be full time students. So uh, the time availability might differ, but you should, you know, make the time to practice as much questions as you can for the exam. Now. Uh, after practicing questions, then we move on to the next step, that is to do a mock exam. But even before doing a mock exam, there is, I believe, one step that you have to do again, which is basically to practice the past paper questions and read the examiner's report. Now, one of the two greatest resources that ACCA has is provided us to assist with our exams is that they've provided us with the past papers which is really useful, of course, definitely. And uh, more than about that, they've also provided us with the examiner's report for each exam session. So what you can do is you can just practice one particular set of questions and then read the examiner's report re relating to that particular session, just to make sure. And uh, let me just explain some more on the uh, examiner's report aspect as well. In the examiner's report, they highlight as to what the strong candidates do and what the weak candidates do. So after attending the past papers and after reading the uh, uh, examiner's report after that, you will be able to understand as to whether you are a strong candidate or a weak candidate. So that one, that's one aspect to it. And secondly, you would also be able to, you know, understand as to whether, okay, so you have a question, right? Okay, please go ahead. So is, is there a pattern in terms of, you know, uh, if, if we go through the past papers, any specific topics like the questions in AI, uh, do they get repeated or it's like, you know, every time it's a new question, for example, in APM, it's very limited set of questions. So it's like the questions gets repeated. So is, is it the same with AI as well? I don't think they repeat the questions because it would be a different question every time. So uh, I don't think there's such a pattern there, but I, I'll tell you what the pattern is. I'm not sure about, uh, you know, uh, I'm not, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that uh, what you said about APM is right, because, you know, when it comes to APM, there are like different varieties of questions from different topics. You cannot even expect anything or you cannot plan a structure for anything, right? Because, uh, you know, once you read through the question, you will understand that, okay, so this is how you should do it. That's basically it. Every question seems like a new question when it comes to APM. But, you know, uh, we're not talking about APM here. Uh, I, I always get drifted off when someone mentions APM because I'm also a faculty for that as well. So sorry for that. Now, when it comes to AAA, uh, you can definitely expect it's not a 
pattern, I would say, because they don't repeat the same question again. But, you know, they can, you can expect questions like, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you can expect the auditor's question or substantive procedure question or uh, some, uh, you know, substantive procedure in relation to other assignments, such as forensic audit or various other audits as well. So that is something that you can expect. Uh, or uh, there are some, you know, questions like, uh, I believe, additional information. I believe, yeah, yeah, I believe that's true, right? Yeah. You will have to provide additional information, which is not provided within the scenario, or you will have to provide audit evidence rather than procedures. So questions like these can be expected, but uh, the examiners will not definitely will not definitely provide the same question again. You can, uh, you know, uh, take my word for that. Uh, Okay, uh, I hope that clears your question, right? Okay, going on. So when it comes to the examiner's report, what they do is they do discuss these things as to what are the, they don't necessarily specifically mention as to what the question is, but they do provide us with some uh, requirements and expectations like that. Uh, sorry, not expectations, I would say, yeah, some hints like that. And they would mention that, okay, this is what has been, what the requirements that were asked, and this is what the candidates have answered. They don't provide us with the answer, but they state that strong candidates this, this, and uh, weak candidates did that, avoid doing what the poor candidates did, and this is something that you can do to improve yourself as well. So while reading through this report, you will be able to get an idea as to what more can you do to improve yourselves. So this is exactly why this is something that you should uh, include within your preparation. So read the, sorry, practice the past paper questions and read the examiner's report in relation to that as well. To get an idea, this is basically the, uh, you know, it's like getting a feedback for the answer that you've written from the examiners themselves in a way, if you think about it, so, right? So that's basically the idea here. <laughs> Now, moving on, and when it comes to past papers, I would suggest practicing these like a few weeks before the exam, if possible as well, you know, to, to get that exam feeler. Now, uh, moving on to the next aspect that is mock exam. And uh, well, the good news is that we do provide uh, the mock exams uh, uh, at FinTram and you will get an individual's feedback on the mock exam that you've written, uh, you know, uh, from, from me as well. So don't worry about that. And we will communicate the dates and everything a bit later because, uh, you know, I'm not exactly sure as to uh, what the date exactly would be, but you can expect the mock exam to be conducted uh, by the last week of May since you're attending for the June session. So yeah. Okay, so that's basically it. And of course, the final step is to go attend your exam. Once you're prepared, you will be confident enough to attend the exam as well. So yeah, so these are the things that you will have to plan for your advanced audit and adjutants exam. And I can see another question. Oh, it's from you, Asia. What was the question again? Can you repeat that? Yeah, so I wanted to ask how many past papers, like any tenure, uh, like past one year, two year, three year, anything in specific? I'm sure it's not possible. You will, you will definitely have to, you know, practice, mandatorily practice the past papers for for the last, let's say, three years or so, or three sessions, not years, I would say sessions. So yeah, that's mandatory. But, uh, you know, uh, you will have to practice as much as possible. And I would say, including as many Pass papers within your preparation would be more effective than, uh, you know, if you have, this is something that you have to do if you only have like limited time. So uh, it can include as many pass papers as you can in your preparation rather than all the other, you know, questions that you do from uh, whatever resources that are available. So that's something that I'd like to point out as well, if you don't have time for it. Otherwise, I would say just, you know, go crazy with that. Uh, do as many questions as possible. That's the best advice that any tutor will give you regarding this particular set subject. Any other questions? Ayush, anything from your side? All right. <clears throat> Is it visible, guys? Yes, right. Okay. <laughs> so what is the exam date? That's the first thing that we have to keep in mind. The exam date is on 6th of June. So, uh, you know, just remember that as 
the you know time flows goes by so yeah uh so when it comes to the next step that we're going to do is we're going to, I'm just going to give you a brief idea as to, you know, what should be uh, your strategy here. Now, when it comes to companies, any companies, what, what they do is they always set an objective and try to achieve that objective using a strategy, right? We all learned that in from various other peoples as well, especially SBL as well, isn't it? So just like that, we're going to, you know, set our objective here. And our objective here is basically to pass the exam at, on June 6th, right? So if that is the case, we already know as to what all things needs to be done and what, are the, what is the, you know, amount of work that needs to be done. So definitely the next step would be to plan our, uh, you know, day-to-day -day activities and things like that. So when it comes to organizations, we, we know that there is a long, they create a long-term plan and then there's a medium-term plan, then there's a short-term plan, and then they allocate responsibilities to each individuals, et cetera, et cetera. So that's basically, that's not the entire, entirely the thing that we're going to do here. We're going to do something called, uh, you know, the backward thinking approach here. Well, I named it myself. So, uh, you know, sorry if that make, uh, name doesn't make any sense, but yeah, I'll explain as to what this is. <clears throat> So we have the objective. Now we just have to think backwards. What all things should I do in the upcoming dates? That's basically what I'm going to think here. Now, uh, we already know that we will definitely have to practice the past papers, right? So I would say that I'm going to do my past papers during these weeks. So I'm just gonna, you know, set that particular plan over there. And what we are discussing here is basically the long-term plan. The short-term plan is something that I'm leaving you to decide because, you know, each of you will uh, understand, you know, your own responsibilities than me. So definitely uh, keep an eye out for that. So uh, <clears throat> moving on to the next aspect. So when it comes to the past papers, let's see, I'll just do that a few weeks before the exam. Uh, since you're a working professionals, I would, uh, you know, anticipate that you won't have much time available, available during the weekdays. But what I would highly recommend is at least try to find like three to four hours uh, per day during the weekdays. During the weekdays, I, I'll, I'll just highlight that once again, during the weekdays. On weekends, you will have to, you know, devote more time as well. I'm not going to say any specific time for week uh, weekends because, you know, it depends upon all your responsibilities as well. But I would say a minimum of at least five to six hours, a minimum, it, it, it again. So keep that in mind. Now, moving on to the next aspect. So I've uh, determined the day in which these in which I'll do the past papers. And then uh, there's the mock exam, which I would do in one of these weeks, most probably. They will be communicated. I'm just, you know, giving an example here. And for these particular set of times, I would, let's say, do the, I'll just practice the questions, something like that. So just create a plan like this, <clears throat> where you would, you know, as to when will you, you know, finish learning the entire thing? And when will you start practicing questions? For example, uh, uh, Isha, in your case, uh, let's say that, uh, you know, you are yet to start with the lectures and things, right? right? So I would say just there are like, uh, I believe 25 lectures, or was it 30? I don't remember. How many lectures are there? So I think, yeah, somewhere around 27, 28. 27, 28, yes, including the others. Okay, okay, got it. <clears throat> so if that is the case, I wouldn't go for like one lecture per lecture per day. I would rather do like maybe two lectures per day. And I believe that some lectures are like one hour or uh, I don't think there are much uh, sessions which are less than one hour, but yeah, uh, it's of uh, a strict time period. One, one and a half hour, that's basically uh, the normal duration. Some are like two hours or so, but yeah. Considering all of these, I could say that I could finish the lectures maybe uh, by 15 days or so, right? I should be able to finish the lectures, let's say by 16th. Let's add a different color here. Okay. And if I'm able to finish the particular lectures during this particular time phase, then definitely I can start practicing my questions. So that's basically it. I'm not going to look at the number of questions uh, that we have available as of now. I believe there are like uh, around 80 questions or so available uh, with various resources. So just try to practice those. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to devote a great amount of time to 
uh, practice the questions rather than you know learning the syllabus. So we have already learned the syllabus, but one thing that you will have to keep in mind is that you should continuously revise these concepts again and again because you know you will learn the syllabus and after that you'll practice a great deal of questions and after that you may you know forget a few things here and there it's human it's in human nature isn't it so definitely you will have to you know keep on practicing uh, give me a minute <coughs> sorry about that yeah definitely you will have to practice uh, a lot of questions in order to be fully prepared for this particular exam the amount of questions as to how much you can do it's entirely dependent upon you but just to give you an insight i would say that uh the 50 mark questions which, which are of limited thing i believe that there are only like uh 20 uh 50 mark questions or so i don't think they, they're even that much so uh, 50 mark questions can take up to uh two hours to write down and then uh you know learn read through the answers and learn what you where you went wrong etc so <coughs> allocate two hours for 50 mark questions and maybe uh, an hour or one hour, an hour and a half or an hour and 15 minutes for the 25 mark questions as well. So keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to, you know, practicing these questions, you shouldn't just, you know, read through everything. That's something that some students do as, uh, as well. Since they're all audit professionals, they just audit the questions as well. So auditing the questions won't give you any, uh, you know, um, give you any learning experience for the exam. Rather, it would just, you know, spoil you by, you know, decreasing your maybe it won't decrease anything, but it won't improve your typing speed or anything like that. So, uh, <clears throat> so that's another thing that you should keep in mind. You should always, you know, practice questions within either, you know, Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel or within the ACCA's uh, practice platform as well. So that's uh, a really important thing to keep in mind. Practicing question doesn't mean reading through questions. It means writing down the question, using the time strategy, and then uh, learning where you went wrong. And another really important, I would say, tip that I can give you is that whenever you are attending a que uh, question and whenever you are uh, you know, reviewing it, you will definitely learn some new points as well. For example, okay, in, in a particular situation, you can apply this principle, you can do this, you can do that, etc. So there would be something new that you learn from each question. So just note that down in a particular book. So that is something that you can adopt as part of your preparation as well, right? Whenever you're doing a question and, and whenever you learn something new, just note it down and revise it again. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, during the last weeks of the exam or so. That's something that you can do. Uh, that's one of the best practice that I would recommend uh, for this particular exam. So, yeah, that's basically it. That's basically all I wanted to say regarding the... Uh, exam related aspects so just plan your time this is just the you know long term plan this is basically what you should do learn the syllabus during this these days and then practice questions during these days and remember guys the uh, you know uh, days that you allocate for learning the syllabus and practicing questions should be uh, the proportion or the uh, the majority of the time should be allocated for practicing questions rather than learning the syllabus so keep this in mind and then during the last few weeks practice the past paper questions and attend the mock exam now uh, another additional thing is that there would be weekly sessions more like the, these during uh, the upcoming few weeks as well, where we will discuss about things like uh, we, we may discuss about examiner's report, or we may even do a question if that's what you want. Or if you find any of the you know topics or concepts difficult, then we can discuss that during these live sessions as well. So I believe that you have you guys have been provided with the uh, WhatsApp number, right? Uh, so there's one group that they've created on WhatsApp. Yeah, that would be it, I believe. But additionally, there is um, you would be given the you, you would be given my WhatsApp number as well. So uh, if not, then I can you know contact the team and then they'll share it with you as well. So don't worry about that. So just uh, you know shoot any questions that you may have to that particular number, or uh, you know if you have any suggestions of something that you want to discuss in the next session, then you can feel free to shoot that as well. Okay, so that's all that I wanted to cover for this particular session, and I hope that you know after this session you'll go ahead and uh, create your short-term plans as well. So uh, yeah, I hope the, all the best for your preparation, and if you have any questions, you can feel free to shoot it now as well. 
So just one question: By when can I expect the lectures and the study materials? Uh, you haven't received it yet. No, I, I actually enrolled today itself. So, okay, okay. Yeah. I believe the team should be able to provide it to you as soon as possible. There's some, you know, software thing going on. So I'm not, I'm not uh, too much knowledgeable in relation to that technical area as of now. But yeah, uh, it would be provided to you as soon as possible. <clears throat> Any other question? I just said something. Let me just open the chat once. <clears throat> Tips on how to study quality control aspects. Okay. <laughs> so uh, you see, I, when it comes to the quality control standard, I believe that you're talking about the uh, individual level as well as the firm level quality control standards, uh, ISQC1 and ISA220, if I remember correctly, yes. So uh, <clears throat> it's not about by hearting the concepts here. When it comes to any standards, it's not about by hiding the uh, definitions or uh, learning the uh, uh, the sentences or the wordings that you uh, that you see within my notes or so. So it's not about that, but it's more about understanding as to what exactly does it mean. What exactly is quality control to an audit firm? How exactly uh, does a quality control measures help a firm to improve themselves? This is what you will have to uh, learn over there. So. I know that some things might be, you know, found a bit more difficult when it comes to quality control. So uh, please understand this, uh, uh, there is, you don't have to buy heart anything, but you only have to learn the essence of that particular standard because the entire standard is like a principle-based approach. So you don't have to, you know, follow the rule to its core. You just have to apply the concepts within that standard to different situations. So learn that uh, particular uh, key essence of each every and every standard. And uh, in order to do that, I believe I have utilized the mnemonic in that particular area, especially when it comes to quality control as well. I believe that's uh, heal me. Yeah, heal me, human resource. And then we have engagement performance, et cetera, things like that. So just uh, keep those mnemonics in mind and you would be good to go. <clears throat> I hope that answers your question. I believe the uh, a bit more core areas that you will have to focus on when it comes to quality control is the questions in relation to it. And I believe we have discussed uh, one or two questions in relation to that area itself in the uh, revision bootcamp. So don't worry about that. <clears throat> okay, is there any other question? You have 10 more minutes, so definitely. No, right, okay. Okay, then if you have any sort of questions, then feel free to uh, shoot them within the uh, WhatsApp number that has been provided to you. And uh, do provide me with any suggestions for the next session if you have any, you know, if you face any difficulties and uh, any topics. So yeah, thank you. And I will see you later in the next session. Bye. Thank you. Bye.